So we want to welcome you to this session. Uh, we're, this session, we're going to talk specifically about um, a call to the nations. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us that um, that we as Christians have the responsibility of taking the Christian message around the world. Uh, we, we know that there are literally billions of people around the world who have very little, if any, access to the gospel. And the Bible also gives us as Christians a great commission to go and to make disciples of all nations. Uh, missionaries have famously said uh, that uh, every Christian should be a missionary. Uh, but, but they've also said things like, we as Christians have an obligation to take the gospel to all the nations. We can't just sit back and hope that someone else does it. So today, uh, we're going to talk with our guests about missions, their missionary call, how they have thought through uh, God's call on their life to see that the nations are reached with the gospel. And we're also going to talk about you and how you can begin to pray and to think about uh, what it is that God wants you to do in the future. Uh, we would really consider, or ask you to consider, uh, the idea uh, that Jesus' great commission uh, is one of taking the gospel to the nations. Our president, Danny Aiken, famously says, last words are meant to be lasting words. And we know that the last words of Jesus to his disciples were, the, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And then Jesus said, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. That's why Southeastern Seminary is a great commission seminary, as we seek to obey uh, Jesus' great commission. So guys, thanks a whole lot for being here uh, with us today. Can you, uh, each of you, uh, Sarah, we'll, let, we'll start with you, and then Alan, we'll let you uh, continue perhaps with answering this question. Can you talk about the time when you knew that your call in your life would be um, would be focused on a missionary call and or serving the nations through what it is that God had gifted you and just placed on your heart? Absolutely. So I am an MK or a TCK, third culture child, and I grew up in South Asia where I was able to see the very distinct difference between light and dark. Like it was very obvious growing up who Jesus is and the difference in the, the false gods and the true God. And so from a very young age, um, I was burdened by my friends not knowing who Jesus is, the people around me. So I grew up knowing that there was such a need um, and that there weren't many people to declare that need. Uh, so when I came back for, for university, for college, the Lord really solidified um, using, which, you know, is such a standard missionary, ver you know, chapter and verse, but in Romans 10, where he talks about how will they hear? And that has always kind of resonated with me. And God really affirmed my calling in college through several short-term trips overseas, um, where there was such a need for the gospel to go into unreached people groups. Um, in fact, one of my experiences was being one of the very first mission teams on the ground in a village that had never heard the gospel wow. of Jesus Christ, which was incredible to be able to even just say Jesus for the first time and pray over someone for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, and just the incredible opportunity that we had to be part of God's plan that that person would hear Jesus's name. Um, and so the Lord really solidified that in me, that there is such a need for us to go and that he created that desire for me to be part of that. Um, and because I saw it all around me um, and I was able to say, Jesus has changed my life and he's changed everything about me. Why would I wa not want other people to see that change and to experience that change? Um, and so for me, my calling was really solidified in university. And the kind of, I think, key um, quote that really has resonated with me as I was a campus minister and would share with my students about calling um, was from William Perry. And it says, to know the will of God, we need to open a Bible and open a map. Hmm. Um, and I think we see God's heart for that all over scripture. That's so great. that's about my um, solidification of calling. That's great. Thanks so much. Alan, yours serving a little bit different role and you serve the nations right. in a different capacity. Can you talk to us about how how you understand and how God just really gripped your heart for the nations and how you serve the nations through your role? Yeah, my, my background is in college ministry. So my initial call to ministry was uh, in, in the area of university ministry. And um, 
I, I would say since that, uh, over the last 30 years, that call has evolved to where I'm at now. And so spent 13 years uh, doing college ministry uh, in Oregon, which was very much a mission field, uh, certainly. And, and then God, uh, God moved us to the East Coast uh, to serve in the home office uh, of IMB. And even then, that, that call was continued with college students uh, in the student mobilization office for the first several years, uh, and then transitioned to working with journeymen, again, still with college students, uh, and then now uh, for the last uh, 10 plus years as personnel consultant, working with all of our categories of uh, folks that are going for two years or longer. And so that has been a joy, but it's, for me, I, I see uh, my calling is, has certainly been um, in some ways a supporting role, a sending role, uh, a encouraging role as people are, are looking to go uh, longer term uh, for uh, at least two years, uh, but some folks going for a lifetime. And so now to look back over the last 15 plus years and see uh, the number of folks that have uh, gone to the field um, through the application process with me, uh, those that are still on the field, uh, even those that have gone and then come back and, and now are serving in different roles uh, in ministry. Uh, but for me, it's, it, it really has been a role that has evolved over the years. Uh, and a lot of that has been just paying attention to what God's doing uh, in my life, the circumstances, the people around me, and uh, paying attention to, to uh, what opportunities he's providing. That's great. Yeah, I think, and I think it's an important point to, to keep in mind is that our calling isn't something that's static. You know, along the way, circumstances, uh, opportunities that come, and our calling can adjust. But both of you just, both of your hearts for the nations and to see those who, who don't have access to the gospel receive access to the gospel flows out of everything that you do. It just fleshes out a little bit different. Uh, so that's it's great. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Sarah, yours is a, um, is a unique story among some who are in ministry, and that is that you serve uh, overseas as a female. And uh, we have some, some ladies who are listening. Can you talk about um, what it's like to serve as a young lady uh, in the international mission field and what type of preparation uh, or advice might you give to some of the young ladies who are listening and watching us today? Absolutely. Um, first of all, I just wanted to kind of give out a little bit of like information. Did you know that women have not only played a significant role in the start of the International Mission Board, right. but in other international mission emphases and agencies? Like, it is amazing to see what God has done in history through women and missions. Um, and as kind of a side plug, if you have not engaged with our IMB 175 um, timeline, I want to encourage you ladies to go back and just look at how many women were pioneers um, in missions and not only what they did for the gospel, but even what they did for social justice and for governments. Um, it would, it's been really neat to see God's um, ability to use women um, in all different roles throughout history. Um, with the International Mission Board, it's amazing to see how many opportunities there are for women to serve um, and what a gift it is for women to serve. Uh, women are incredibly resilient. Women are fearless. <laughs> women are creative. And women are incredibly, I don't use the word flexible, I use the word fluid um, because we can adapt. And y'all, that's a huge need on the field. Like there right. are so many places where women um, can thrive um, where men don't have access. Right. Um, and so I always encourage women, first of all, there is a place and a need for you to serve overseas. Amen. Um, and we have an incredible um, organization through the Southern Baptist Convention, the International Mission Board, um, as an opportunity that wants to use women on the field um, mm -hmm. and sees the potential that women can bring to the field um, and to the gospel. Uh, message getting out. So I want to just first kind of put that out there and say it is amazing to see what the Lord is going to do with women on the field. Um, also, I just want to say women, um, as you're kind of preparing and trying to figure out your call, one of the biggest um, things women struggle with, and this is just a real talk here, straight to straight face, um, we struggle with the fear of loneliness. We are super relational. Women are, women are relational beings. Um, so we struggle with loneliness. 
there's the struggle with, Lord, am I going to end up single if I go overseas forever? Um, you know, women struggle with that. What if I want a family? What if I want a career? Uh, that's a lot of those things that women can struggle with. And girls, that can hold you back. Mm. I want to encourage you to remember God created you as a woman. Mm. God created you. He desired you to be a woman. He desired you to, to go and to serve and to use your abilities as a woman um, to declare his glory to the nations. So I want to encourage you to, re to release your fear that you may have about going for no matter what the time is. Um, I love how you talked about our calling being seasonal. Um, and I, that can even be with how long you go overseas. We have opportunities for short term, but we have opportunities that can go mid and long. Um, but I want to encourage you to fix your eyes on Jesus. Know that you can trust him. He's for you. He's not against you. And I promise you, he's going to equip you and go before you in all those areas that you struggle with and that you may hold back and that you allow fear to grab a hold and say, okay, maybe not now. So I just want to encourage you not to compromise that calling because of fear of any of those things, because women, you're needed and we want you on the field. Um, and there is a place for you to serve. Also, I encourage you women to get as many tools in your tool belt. So take as many classes, um, get, as, get as many um, skills and just kind of experience as you can, because the Lord is going to be able to use some of those overseas. Uh, I was laughing. I was actually talking with um, a colleague who's training uh, girls right now, and they have a bakery. Wow. And they are using the, so two of the girls that came over have a passion for baking things. So they actually came back, took a couple more courses and went back to help use that as a platform. So all that to say is girls get different creative skills. You know, you can never have as many, too many tools in your tool belt um, to use overseas. And even here, it's amazing to see what the Lord will use um, with your different job skills here. Um, and then I just want to encourage you to be open-handed. Um, be open-handed with your time and be open-handed with your future. Uh, because it's incredible to see once God says, hey, I got you. The time may not look the same for you, but he's got it and he knows. And it's amazing to see how he works out um, all things for his goodness and for, for ultimately your goodness when you say yes to going. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much. Thanks for the encouragement first that, that there is not only a place but a need uh, on the mm -hmm. field. And uh, there's a whole lot of things that hold people back. Thanks for that, Sarah. Alan, you're, um, you have a little bit different responsibility. You're a consultant, a personnel consultant. So you walk with people as they're thinking through their missionary calling. You help them process it, understand it, apply it. Uh, so as you think from this, from your consultant's viewpoint, what would you say some of the first steps that someone ought to consider as they're thinking about international missions and perhaps even if you if you will take a few minutes to just talk about maybe even prior to that or something preparation for uh someone preparing to go on the mission field can you talk about that for us sure yeah um it, it's one of our favorite things as consultants to actually get in contact with people prior to them uh, being ready to start the application and and move overseas but when when we can talk with a, a high school student, a, a freshman in college, when they still got two, three, four, maybe six years before they're gonna hit that long-term perspective, that's the time to start preparing. Mm -hmm. So three things that I always talk about. One is uh, discipleship, uh, ministry leadership experience. Anything that you can do in uh, discipling others, getting ministry leadership experience, leading a Bible study, teaching a Sunday school class, working with youth or children, anything like that to just to gain experience in a ministry context. That's going to serve you well. Second, cross-cultural experience. Yes, going overseas is great, and there's lots of opportunities. Uh, hopefully, there will be more opportunities again soon <laughs> to, to travel overseas, and that's great, but Reality is there are lots of cross-cultural opportunities right here in our backyard. Yes. Uh, so look for those opportunities of interacting with international students, with refugee families, inner city ministry, low-income housing projects. So those are cross-cultural experiences for most of us. So we do want to see some overseas uh, experience, but we're also looking at how are you engaging people cross-culturally right here at home? Mm -hmm. 
And then the third area is, uh, is that dreaded E word, that evangelism, sharing your faith, okay? What are you going to do if you go overseas as a missionary? Evangelism. You're going for the whole purpose of sharing your faith. So get comfortable, get confident doing that now. Yeah. And if, if that's uh, something you're uncomfortable with, then now's the time to seek help. Uh, to to get with your youth pastor, get with your campus minister, your uh, mentor from church, and, and ask for help in learning how to share your faith and, and get comfortable with that here in your own context before you just try to do that overseas. That's great. Thank you so much. That's, that's perfect. That's, as, as you think about God's call on your life, um, we don't just say a prayer, hear a sermon, walk to the front, and immediately jump on an airplane and we're overseas. There's preparation work um, that that takes place. There are things that we can do. But, you know, along with that, um, there are some elements of preparation that God does in us. That is that God gives us unique personalities. God gives us specific gifts, talents, opportunities, um, and which I think is encouraging because it's a reminder that not all of us are called to be the same, to do the exact same thing, right. um, that the world is so big that it needs all of us. I mean, Sarah, you even made the point, God needs girls, God needs boys, God needs men, God needs women, God needs families, introverts, extroverts, intellectuals. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people. So can you give us some, just some uh, insight in how has God used your particular giftings, your particular personality uh, for his glory among the nations. In other words, how's, how's your calling and your personality, your calling and your giftings really dovetailed together so you can know God's uniquely made me who I am and to serve him in a unique way. So I'll share about one of my favorite things. Um, I love to dance. So dance is my favorite thing to do. Yes, and all kinds of dancing. So square dance, line dance, swing dance <laughs> um, a little bit of hip hop. So I have been able to, when I go um, now overseas and go around the world, um, I'm able to utilize that as a way to um, not just draw a crowd, but also to um, develop relationships. Uh, to use it even here in America to establish um, cultural connections. So um, for me, I have a, an affinity for dance. I have an ability to do it and I'm able to pick it up pretty well. So that has allowed me to um, use that in different ways overseas um, and even here to start um, Bible studies, to start uh, relationships um, and to help my students get engaged uh, with each other. So um, that's just an example of, of something that's kind of unique for me. Sure. Uh, but all that to say is um, there are tons of job opportunities um, that are out there uh, short term, long term with um, needs that can be specific from everything from graphic design to medical to business to engineering mm -hmm. um, to social media. Uh, there, there's not to use the word endless, but there are endless <laughs> opportunities out there. Right. And I just want to encourage you. God has made you unique. And I love that you even brought up once again, gender. Um, I do want to call out men right now. Yeah. We need, Amen. Men. we need men on the field. There are certain places and country and people groups where that's our door is, is guys going in. Right. That's right. There are certain religions that it needs to be a male to right. talk to a male. Yeah. And so I want to just encourage you, God, once again, that's another gift that God gave you is your gender. Yeah. And so use that, use that for the kingdom. Use the brains that you have, use your personality, use your wit, use all of that. There is a place for you to serve. Um, and actually, I'll be honest with you, I believe that's one of the reasons why God puts you for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. um, and students, I want to talk to you high schoolers and college students as you're trying to figure out um, a major as you're trying to figure out why am I here? Think about what God's given you. Mm, think right. about the the unique talents, the gifts, the abilities that you kind of lean more towards, that you gravitate towards. Um, and recognize that that comes from the Lord, That's and great. He may have given you that because He wants to use it 
in South Asia or in Europe or in Central Asia or in East Asia. Um, so know that you're created on purpose for a purpose in such a time as this. That's great. Perfect. Great answer. Thank you for that, Sarah. Alan, what do you think? Amen. Uh, I would echo that. And, and guys, just to put the challenge out there, for the last several years, we have seen uh, for every three to four females serving, we have one guy. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're, I, I appreciate Sarah promoting the females and there are opportunities for females, but guys, they're putting you to shame uh, on getting out there and doing it. So just, I, I do want to challenge you with that. From a preparation uh, standpoint as well, um, don't think you have to have a Bible degree hmm. to be a missionary, okay? Especially your undergrad. If you're just thinking about college and thinking about what your, your degree should be, but you think God is calling you to missions, that's great. God will use whatever degree you have. Hmm. God is, has created an interest in you. He has created a uh, gifting in you, talents in you. Pursue a degree that you're interested in and see what doors that may open overseas. Right now, about 75% of our long-term missionaries are serving in restricted access locations where they need some kind of platform to access that country. Mm -hmm. So your business degree, your engineering degree, your teaching degree may be the, the door that gets you into that location. Uh, so that's, that's, um, that's a, a, just one thing I, I want to say out there. Uh, for me personally, um, my undergrad was in business. Hmm. And I thought well, when I got to my senior year of college and God called me into ministry, I'm thinking, what am I doing with this business degree? But you know what? It has been a fantastic degree to have as a background hmm. being in ministry. Uh, it's working with people. It's working with finances. It's all of those things. For my personality, uh, my wife tells people that I have the spiritual gifts of packing and counseling. She just can't find them in scripture. Okay. As a, as a missionary, as someone who has traveled around the world pretty, pretty extensively, uh, that gifting has been uh, invaluable. Um, but the, the, the personality that God has given me, uh, it, it's, it is affirming. It is exciting to see him using my gifting uh, in this role as personnel consultant in ways that I would never have dreamed. Yeah. Uh, and so just be encouraged by that, that God has created you as a unique individual and he has a future for you. And if he calls you into missions, uh, he is going to use you just as you are uh, in the personality he's given you, the gifting he's given you. That's great. Hey, before we went live, you and I, were, you guys and I were talking about the different type of opportunities available through the International Mission Board, short term, long term, mid term uh, opportunities for different. Can you take like maybe one minute or something and just give a, a, a sketch of that? You were talking about different people to talk to. So if you could pitch this out for, you know, if, as, as students are beginning to sense, maybe God's called me. What should I do? What can I do? What is available can one of you or maybe both of you just give a, a real quick, these are some things and some pathways that we have through the International Mission Board. Yeah, Sarah, why don't you start with the, the student volunteer opportunities, and then I'll talk about the midterm and long term. Sounds good. So we have a lot of different what I call time opportunities. So we have everything from like one week break opportunities, something over Christmas break, spring break, uh, short term in the summer, one to two weeks. Um, then we have summer long opportunities that range from four weeks to all summer. Um, and those are kind of our, what we call our volunteer opportunities. Um, and then I'm going to let uh, Alan talk a little bit more about our next two major opportunities. Yeah, once, uh, once people get through uh, college, that's really where I pick them up with uh, the journeyman program. Mm -hmm. uh, journeyman is a two year assignment that's fully funded for college graduates. Uh, so that's that's our midterm category is serving two years. Uh, there are a couple of other midterm categories of one called Macedonia, where you're actually working on a seminary degree while you're serving overseas uh, as a missionary. 
Uh, we also have uh, a little bit back in, in Sarah's uh, ballpark with the hands-on. Uh, hands-on is a, a up to a year uh, assignment uh, for for students or those uh, fresh out of college. Uh, so there are lots of opportunities. Our long-term missionaries, they are serving for three years or longer. Uh, typically, they serve on the field for three years, come home for six months, and then go back for another three years. Okay. Uh, so there's there's opportunities out there, regardless of the, the time that you have available, uh, we can fill that time for you. <laughs> yeah, and I do want to just kind of caveat real quick back to the hands-on. One of the unique things about hands-on is if you are a member of a Southern Baptist church, um, it is an incredibly discounted price. Hmm. So um, $39.95 for the semester, which is incredible. And that includes your airfare yeah. and housing and all of that. So hands-on is an incredible kind of midway I'm not quite sure I'm ready for two years. I've done the whole summer. I'm ready for at least a semester, maybe two. So that's hands-on. So it's a little bit unique. Um, but as Alan works with Journeyman Macedonia Career, uh, Brad Kinney is in his office and he works with our student team. He is um, the one that looks at applications for summer and hands-on. So if there are questions, um, we relate with Brad a lot on that right. with, um, with those pathways. Great. Thanks. Appreciate it. That's, that's really helpful. Uh, and just to be clear, the thirty nine ninety five is not like less than $40. It's not that thirty nine ninety five. dollars But that is, that's a, that's an all expenses that that's everything that's included in that. So that's a, uh, that's great. Hey, real quick. As we, as we uh, Scott, just to piggyback on that, depending on the, the school, yeah. uh, the university you're at, you may be able to get some, some university credit uh, for that semester abroad as well. That's right. Uh, so you'd have to work that out with your university, but several several of our universities are doing that. That's right. Yeah, we at Southeastern do that and through our college uh, and our seminary both. So, hey, as we um, land the plane metaphorically on our discussion about uh, call to the nations and international missions, um, just real curious if you could give just a little bit of um, – of encouragement to our students about perhaps some resources uh, that you have found particularly helpful that maybe feed your soul, uh, feed your calling, motivate you for uh, for a call to the nations. What would be some resources that you might recommend uh, to those uh, who are watching us today? The Bible. The Bible. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly right. Great starting point. <laughs> is all of the above. Um, <laughs> I would say, just real quick, I'm going to do um, our web, some website resources that I think are pretty incredible. Uh, if you could check out on our imb.org, uh, Deepening Discipleship Material mm -hmm. and Exploring Missions, those are two um, really neat kind of resources. We also have a lot of resources with prayer. Um, so we believe that prayer is one of the most important parts of the missionary task. Mm -hmm. um, and even just figuring out your calling and starting to pray for people groups. Um, and so we have tons of resources that are free um, on what to pray for, how to pray. We have a prayer app. Um, I want to encourage you guys, if you've never downloaded the IMB prayer app, um, it's just a great resource just to start developing that heart um, for the nations and just start being part of what God's doing now. Uh, another couple of books I love, uh, Foreign to Familiar by Sarah yeah. Lanier. If you've never read that, it's probably a 30-minute read, um, but it's great for any context, helping mm. you understand cultural competency. Um, and then I have this book. If you have never read this, this is a theoretical book, Evangelism of Exiles. Um, amazing. And then my last two books, I'm going to just plug Nick Ripken because these books are incredible. Insanity of God and Insanity of Obedience. Um, I want to encourage those. And then Preach and Heal, if you've not read this, this is a great book as well. That's so right. those would be some just resources I would encourage you um, to just grab. Thanks, Sarah. Alan, anything else besides the Bible or along, alongside the Bible, not besides the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're Sarah focused on, on the, the books and the website resources, uh, which are great. There are some uh, fantastic uh, resources on the IMB website. Uh, but in addition to that, I would say people. Mm. Take advantage when you have opportunity to interact with missionaries that are home on their stateside or journeymen who have just come home from, from their two-year assignment. Hear their stories. Listen. 
realize that they are real people. Mm -hmm. Knock them off the pedestal. They don't need to be on a pedestal. They're real people. And you can be one of those. So the, the more that you can take advantage of, of interacting with those folks, hearing their stories as they speak in your churches, uh, you know, get to know them, uh, go to lunch with them, whatever that you can do just to rub shoulders and, and, and not overlook the, the people resources in your life as well. That's great. Thank you so much, guys, for being with us today. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your wisdom uh, and the encouragement that you have been to uh, our viewers. Uh, also, uh, the resources that you provided. And I know that people can continue to reach out to you through the International Mission Board if they have other questions. And so we'll right. put some of your contact information uh, uh, give it out to uh, to those who are viewing and they can reach out to you there. Now, for those of you who are watching, we believe that a call to ministry is always a call to prepare. And that preparation can include education. It includes being equipped in different specific ways. And we at Southeastern believe so strongly in this that we've provided different ways and avenues for equipping, for educating, and for preparing people to fulfill their call to missions and their call to ministry. There are a number of pathways that you can go through at Southeastern Seminary that allow you to get your education in a timely way, in a way that involves on-campus education as well as online education, practical, timely education. And you'll hear more about that in just a second.